Hello, friends. Robert Pevin here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy, novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today is... What is today, Sam? It's Warlock Wednesday! Best day of the week. Yeah. Best day of the week. Warlock Wednesday. And today we will be covering yet another Eldritch Invocation. Today is a Ghostly Gaze. Ooh. Spooky and eyes involved because you're looking at things. This is from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, prerequisite 7th level. As an action, you gain the ability to see through solid objects to a range of 30 feet. Within that range, you have dark vision if you don't already have it. This special sight lasts for a minute or until you lose your concentration ends as if you were concentrating on a spell. During the time, you perceive objects as ghostly, transparent images. Once you use it, you can again until you do it, take a short or long rest. This is so cool. I love this kind of invocation. I think this is, it's a unique, powerful effect that has a lot of potential to be deeply interesting and it has moments of clear uses without it being oppressively like pervasive. This isn't a constant, but it's a cool little tool to add to your toolbox as a warlock that will make you feel really awesome. Yeah, I was, you know, my initial thinking was that it's a seventh level is kind of high for this. And I agree. Well, but I mean, I've I've come around to not thinking that as much. Um, But uh, also I was thinking, you know, why not just make this at will? Because how many times are you really going to be using it? But again, that one um, I've come back on to that. You don't want this to be all the time willy nilly. You want to have to know when you want to use this yes maybe it'll pay off maybe it won't you're gonna have to do something take a short rest before you have another crack at this i like that i think seventh level is a good place to uh to get it at because uh as a dungeon master i'm thinking there's gonna be times when you want stuff to be hidden and you want them to go through these means of finding it but by the time seventh level comes around you know we're getting more powerful spells and magic to to handle problems in different creative ways that seems around okay you can look through walls a couple times a day i so i i think if warlocks didn't also get the robust suite of other base magical effects like silent image at will like just the regular spell casting like detect magic and whatnot i think that this would be a really great lower tier feature to sort of set warlocks aside as this is warlock magic, which is uniquely different from wizard magic, which should be really uniquely different from cleric magic, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'd like the idea of giving the classes more distinction. And I think this could be an avenue to explore for doing that, and which is why I would I would say this as a lower level once per short rest feature would still feel pretty good to me. Whereas you can still as a DM challenge it in a lot of ways because the gate at once per short rest is a pretty massive gate and only lasts a minute, right? So there, this isn't something that like you know ahead of time of every possible encounter coming up. It's not like you can always see through all of objects around you. The 30 foot range limitation is really heavily a gate compared to something like etherealness, right? Which is a big spicy upper level spell. Yeah. All that being said, this is still when you get it, gonna feel good in a lot of instances this is still when you get it going to be a tool you'll have for heist missions a tool you have for dungeon crawling a tool you'll have to pull out really whenever you'd want to just enough that you're like i'll ghostly gaze now see what's going around surveil the environment get level of safety get quantities of monsters waiting on the other side of a hall or a doorway from you get a a good idea is okay what's in the vault let's see in there to make sure we know what we're going for kind of deal that all i think with its minute duration, which is breaking concentration, there are a lot of things stacked against this, but the effect is definitely cool enough and unique enough that I'm gonna, I've am gonna i wanted it and put it on many a warlock. There's a, another interesting thing about it. A lot of these kind of spells, like uh, divination things, they'll be blocked by a thin sheet of lead or a foot or, of stone or something. That's got no, none of these limitations, does it? No. But it has a different limitation, and again, the limitation is 30-foot range, right? So you can see through an object within 30 feet. If that then goes into more open space, you can still see in that open space, right? You can just you see through the 30 feet's worth of solid objects. What that could mean for dwarf artisans that are really good at building the best safes known to man is just they're at least 30 feet deep, right? It's safe, 30 feet of air, lead wall, lead wall, lead wall to prevent ghostly gaze from seeing inside, right? This is just an extra fun layer to add into your over-the-top, complex, world's strongest, safest, safe kind of deal if you wanted to build it. I think this is actually a pretty fun extra barrier because it's different than what a lot of other barriers are, and that I think is really cool. I like that this 
This challenges, again, what he said, seeing through lead normally or walking through lead is normally a barricade to this. This being on a different a different kind of issue, this having a different, this is having different requirements makes it more interesting to me. It makes worlds a little bit more alive and interesting and more options have more opportunity to shine in those environments, right? Where different things can challenge yeah. stuff. I think it'd uh, be cool just to, you know, we're talking about a vault or something. You uh, you take a peek in there first. Then, all right. So I, I was thinking with uh, with Misty Step, mm -hmm. you have to be able to see where you're going. Does this count? I yeah, yeah, absolutely. You so this is the easy question: Can you Misty Step through a window you can see through? I believe the answer to that question is yes, and this should be exactly the same as that, which yeah. makes it really really cool, right? This becomes something that now automatically beyond just like naked on a character with no other abilities still being relatively interesting now pairing it with sight-based effects now pairing it with spells that you know hit a creature you can see within range this is the a lot of them even like magic missile isn't technically obstructed by barriers it's functionally targets things you can see within range which opens up ghostly gaze to let you do some pretty cool stuff because again there's not really projectiles there are projectiles in this game, but they're worded differently than those spells and abilities are, which gives you lots of interesting opportunities to do some fun, some fun and interesting builds, some directions to yeah. consider for like your Elder Blaster, for example. Uh, there's there's room to do powerful and interesting things through walls with this, which I think is super cool. At least rules is written. I, I'm still. Still on the fence about that whole uh, magic missile thing. I know, listen, a lot of people are. I yeah. by rules is written right. So like, Eldritch Blast is a beam of crackling energy straight towards a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. I will. I'll have to check with how spell attacks specifically function. Um, I imagine you have to see them. I don't know if you need to see them and have them be unobstructed. And that's going to be. All of these kinds of weird, interesting questions that are going to pop up whenever it comes to these kinds of things. Like, for example, think, something like Charm Person requires sight. You can charm people through walls, right? That makes yeah. sense to me. I don't have a problem with that's uh, you know, there's not actual energy, like you know, blasting through. That uh, maybe okay, maybe I'm thinking about magic wrong, but I feel like it was uh, an unintentional omission. Oh, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't you worry. I'm not saying that's at all rules as intended. I just think that that is a cool element of this spell. And as someone that likes the weird, janky rules interactions this game sometimes produces, I see it as an entirely upside here. It's definitely a conversation you're going to want to have with your DM to be like, hey, this is the physical words. This is my understanding of the rules. I haven't done the deep research probably to look into all this. What do you think about it? Get their opinion. Get what they think should be handled in these situations. Figure out how they would rule things like that and then work from there. Because it does open up a lot of opportunities to do some potentially degenerate stuff where you're like killing things through walls and whatnot. So that's, you know, something you're going to want to consider, like ignoring all cover and being able to shoot through that cover, like full cover is potentially really cool and powerful. Just like, you know, what does and doesn't work with that is going to be entirely at the discretion of what the rules say, what your DM thinks about what the rules say, what rules is written versus rules is intended actually ends up being, you get a lot of weird questions with that thing and make it super fun. I do like uh, this lasting a minute. You you peek inside the vault. You can suddenly misty step in there. You got a full minute to grab as much crap as you can at that misty step, misty step back out, out, or the site yeah. goes away, and you're sitting there for an hour. Yeah, yeah. This like so uh... we just we we did a movie review of the D and D movie, right? This right. feels like one of those shenanigans, right? Where mm -hmm. you know they you sneak your way into something without necessarily being able to get out all that easily, but that is a really interesting tool to have in your toolbox, right? The minute duration is a genuinely cool element of it that will give you opportunity to say, "Well, I definitely can get in there, but I need to be in there for more than a minute. What do I do to give me enough time to short rest to get back out, or how else do we get this character out once they're in on the other side? And that opens up a whole well of opportunity for a lot of characters to shine. And that's the kind of features that I really love. Of course, just a gamble. You're, you, mm -hmm. you're going into this vault of magical items and uh, something will get me out, right? Probably something in there we can <laughs> use to get out. 
I love the idea of doing this into like a moving, you look, you look from the side of the road, you see a caravan or something, you see like uh, a big uh, jail cell, like a prisoner being transported or something, and you just like get in there with them. You're just like from the roadside being like, we're in. And you just teleport in there, misty step your way from cover, using just looking through things, right? You can look through a building, through the street, into the object you want to teleport into, all of that and just be there and no one will have any idea you disappeared inside there. That's so cool to me. There's um, oh, so interesting. Yeah, this one's got a lot, of, a lot of fun potential. Agreed. I'm glad it exists. Me too. Again, I think it this could be a really great opportunity for Wizards to add more distinction, remove some overlap, give different classes access to different kinds of magical effects. I think that will make the game more robust and more interesting, give more varieties of characters opportunities to be like, this is really cool on its own, but when paired with this other class, this thing that I normally don't have access to, now we're cooking with gas. Now we're doing all kinds of wacky, wonderful stuff. That's what I'd like to see happen. I think this could be a cool access to explore for Warlocks. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> take all the bard spells away from wizards. Yes, please. <laughs> it's a really easy place to start. All right. Uh, well, you got anything else to say about this? It feels like we could talk about this forever. There's just but we'd just be going into different fun, silly uses. Yeah. Or diving down but, uh, rules as it written versus intended versus how this plays the game interactions. And I don't know if that's necessarily an enjoyable video to watch. So, uh, <laughs> this video that I think it might be enjoyable, but, uh, that's an entirely different video. That that's fair. I think this is a four out of five. I think it's quite exceptional. I imagine this is going to be, it may seem innocuous. Once for a short rest, one minute, concentration are all big check marks to say, okay, you can't do necessarily a ton with it. But with without with less than five minutes of having really looked into this effect, Bob, you came up with a really cool interaction that I had never thought of, just misty stepping with it. it is so basic and so interesting that this has to have wells of opportunity that even you're playing with it at the table, when you're looking at options to pair with it, there's gonna be a ton of fun to be had here. And your DM is gonna have to go, oh, they need to see into that. Okay, how do I necessarily navigate this and that's going to think be a fun problem for them to then have but not like game warping in the ways that other more powerful features tend to be able to do uh, its limitations gonna, are very much there they are but i'm gonna go ahead and take the leap and give this one a five out of five for a few different reasons i think it's powerful i think it's more powerful than i'm giving credit for because yeah, i haven't thought of all be. the uh the ramifications and a lot of fun absolutely yeah and that's that's all i want about an invocation what i want for my warlock wednesdays right it's a lot of fun it's what the warlock class is really good at delivering as long as you avoid the traps it's really good at delivering a fun experience but there are a lot of traps in this class <laughs> all right um down in the comments i would like to know how else you uh, have, have made use of this? What other spells or abilities or whatever have you combined this with and, and all the shenanigans you pulled? I'd love to what see like you know? a five class, multi-class nonsense build that's just activating as many weird interactions with ghostly gaze as possible. I think that sounds like a great time. All right. That was, like you said, ghostly gaze. Thank you, Sam. And thank you everyone for joining us. Let us know what you think in the comments and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.